Henry finds himself in a surreal, dreamlike situation, having a strange item barricading him inside his apartment, facing unreal deformed entities taunting him. As he tries to find a way out, he displays how challenging it is for him to communicate with others in order to ask for help, as if some invisible force has casted a spell on him, preventing him from doing so. Hi folks, I'm R, and welcome to the surreal fever dream which many could possibly relate to or at least see the representation of what they experience. Keep in mind that there will be spoilers, as always. With that said, let's begin. Waking up from a loud sound coming from inside his apartment, Henry goes to his hallway to investigate what was the source of the sound. Reminiscing on how he used to like the large neon lit sign of the adjacent Blue Mound Apartments, the protagonist explains how it's more annoying now due to its loud buzzing sound and ever-present light even at night, making it difficult for him to fall asleep. Going to the hallway to investigate the source of the sound, something heavy seems to have fallen from the higher level, obstructing the path to the main door, effectively trapping Henry in his apartment. Trying to use the telephone, he remembers that all the landlines were disabled after the storm from yesterday. Henry, having no other option but to wait for someone to get behind his door, maybe a mailman or people who distribute leaflets, so that he could ask them for help, he explores his apartment for something to do in order to waste some time. After some hard decision making, Henry settles with listening to radio which makes some really loud cracking sounds, causing a neighbor come to Henry's apartment to complain about the noise. Henry takes his shot and apologizes for the loud sound, informing his neighbor, Mr. Ina, that he's stuck in his apartment. Time being late hours in the evening, Mr. Ina doesn't take his pleas seriously, especially as Henry is not a very well-spoken person, not explaining his situation very clearly. Mr. Ina leaves, being tired and thinking Henry is just having a party, being probably drunk and not hearing him very well through the door, which makes Henry develop a sudden feeling of doom and paranoia that he might not be able to leave his apartment. Being in a state of developing panic, Henry considers climbing down from his bedroom's window using his bed sheets as a rope. He contemplates that it would be less awkward as there would be less people going through the back alley window, which could indicate that Henry Henry might have social anxiety or could be an introvert, not being very good at speaking to people as in this situation, anyone would shout for help instead of thinking what people might think of them. As Henry tries to climb down, he notices the bed sheets are too short, unable to reach the floor. Lucky for him, there's a girl in the back alley who stares at him, which puts Henry in a forced situation to talk with her. He starts by asking for help in a strange manner instead of explaining his situation, asking if the girl wants to help him. Due to his lack of ability to explain himself properly and the hostile attitude of the stranger, the girl starts accusing Henry of being a creep, Calling his action of putting his bed sheets out of the window disgusting. Henry starting to get nervous, doesn't get a chance to talk, with a seeming social anxiety preventing him from interrupting the girl's multiple chain of accusations and insults. The girl being paranoid that Henry is a creep who's been watching her, acting really strange, throws a plastic bottle at him and leaves right after, clearing the scene of assault. Unsurprisingly, Henry notices the girl was drunk as the bottle reeks of cheap but strong alcohol, calling his encounter embarrassing. Furthermore, pointing out that Henry might have a shy and introverted personality. As if anything, the situation was more embarrassing and despicable for the stranger rather than Henry who's trying desperately to leave his apartment and find help. Henry giving up on trying to get help from outside, manages to push the heavy metal item barricading his main door, enabling him to access the bathroom. Strangely, he finds his TV remote there, which he picks up and turns on the TV to kill some time, to maybe calm his nerves and think clearer. Soon, strange events start to occur, things Henry cannot explain. He finds a wet magazine shoved inside his toilet, which he doesn't have any idea of how it ended up there. 
As he goes back to watch TV, the screen cuts to black with the glass layer falling, revealing that the TV has been empty inside all along, with no wires or internal parts. What he finds inside, however, terrifies Sam, with a board instructing him to knock on. As his curiosity peaks, gathering all of his courage, he knocks on the panel with someone knocking back from the other side. Finding the entire experience from the very start to be surreal, Henry sees his neighbor, Ava Meadows, whom he has a crush on, who is looking directly at him through his window. Feeling nervous around her, he tries to open the window, which is conveniently stuck as well, hardly communicating with Ava, who asks him why he knocked on the wall. He explains that he's stuck in his apartment, with Ava suggesting him to use bed sheets to climb down the window. Henry explains he did this already and instead chooses to stay till morning instead of asking Ava to get help, feeling embarrassed that he would bother her. After some time, starting to feel a heavy nut in his stomach, that things aren't going to just solve themselves, Henry grabs Ava's attention by throwing his eraser at her window, getting the courage to ask her for help. In a shy and forced manner, Henry asks if it wouldn't be too much trouble for Ava to help him, using the public telephone downstairs when they start a conversation. Henry admits in the conversation that he's the quiet shy type that doesn't go out much and doesn't so socialize with many people. When Ava also opens up, saying that she's similar and likes to explore haunted and abandoned creepy places. She further explains that she went to lock cabins before, some ancient places which seemingly were used by entities known as demise, some entities she doesn't remember the name of. Ava proceeds to use the public phone when she notices that it's out of order as someone smashed it, possibly a drunk club goer from the club across from the building. Ava's starting to feel unsafe and strange as she doesn't notice one single person outside. Despite a popular club and many stores being nearby, Henry instructs her to use another phone on the other side of the building. Waiting for a while, losing sight of Ava, Henry explores his apartment, finding a hole on his wall going right through it. Peeping through the hole, he observes a humanoid entity standing in its place, thinking the obstructed view is possibly making a person seem like an entity. Adjusting his clock and getting back to the window to observe Ava, Henry notices that she's back at her apartment, standing still, bobbing back and forth, looking very strange. Henry tries to speak to her, but whenever he speaks, Ava just repeats back, with her name in the dialogue box changing to Ave. Henry, worried about her, can't get her to respond sensibly, acting very strange as if she's pulling a very inconvenient prank, trying to scare Henry or otherwise as if she is possessed by a demonic entity. Getting somewhat spooked from the surreal encounter, he goes back checking his apartment, seeing blood dripping down from the large item that is barricading his door. Starting to feel very uneasy, feeling as if he's in a bad dream, he notices Ava being normal again, looking as she did before, standing behind her window. Speaking with Ava, she says that she just came back to her apartment, denying that she was repeating after Henry earlier. Henry, questioning his own sanity, dismisses his strange last encounter and asks what took her so long. Ava explains that the grill she went to was empty where she waited for some time when she eventually fell asleep uncontrollably. After she woke up, no one was still around there which made her give up on finding a telephone. She further explains it's like a ghost town down there even though the shops and clubs are open with no one at sight anywhere. They joke about it saying that in Dem River, the town that they are in, things like this are just a normal occurrence. Henry decides to further describe what the item barricading his door is, mentioning that it looks like a large rusty cabinet coming from level 4, the higher level, which is apparently fully vacant. The landlady seemingly barricaded the stairwell to that level with a gate to prevent the Lincoln junkies occupying the place and satisfying their needs there, who seem to also perform some sort of rituals. Knowing level 5 is in a bad state of disrepair, Henry assumes the ceiling could have collapsed due to lack of care and maintenance. 
he asks Ava to use her camera and take a photograph of the higher level from where she's standing so that he could get an idea of how it looks like now. Just after she takes a photo from the higher level, she proceeds to take a photo of Henry, calling it cute, seemingly kicking off a potential happy ever after, or at least that's what Henry daydreams about in his mind. Wouldn't that just be convenient? As Ava decides to slide the photos under Henry's door, Ina, the neighbor who complained earlier, is heard talking from the building's hallway outside. As Henry peeks through the hole to see what's happening, he sees Ina obstructing Ava and making inappropriate suggestions, being too touchy and harassing her. Despite her pleas and clear indication for Ina to stop, he doesn't relent and keeps harassing her, trying to take her to his apartment by force. Ina being too persistent and not taking no for an answer makes Henry use his intuition to help Ava, using his tooth floss to swing his alarm clock to Ina's apartment, making him leave Ava and go back to his apartment to check the source of the sound. Ava proceeds to slide the photos under Henry's door, which he inspects, getting confused as it doesn't seem to be from the level above, with a strange figure standing at his window, just peeking through and observing. Henry going back to his window, he tries to ask Ava how did she take this photo as it doesn't resemble the floor above, when she apologizes and asks Henry for some time to calm herself being clearly shaken and upset after what Anna did to her, making her nervous as if she wants to cry. Henry, noticing how helpful Ava has been running this errand so late at night for him, even having such a horrible encounter with the old creepy Anna, he suggests that they should probably leave this till tomorrow so they can both get some rest. Ava, being shaken, agrees and wishes Henry a good night until they speak next time, leaving slowly, having deep sorrow in her face. As Henry goes back to bed, he expresses how horrible he feels for what happened to Ava, hoping that she's okay, when he proceeds to do what many introverts and shy people do best, doubting himself and blaming himself for all that happened to her, bringing himself down that he always ruins things, feeling immense guilt. As Henry is deep asleep, the telephone in his apartment which wasn't working starts to ring, giving him severe paranoia. As he goes to check the telephone, about to pick it up, it stops ringing, leaving Henry worried. As he picks up the phone, it still shows to be dead, making him perplexed to how something like this would be possible. As he heads back to his bedroom, he becomes frozen in place, witnessing an overshadowing entity with long limbs standing outside of his window. He observes the entity looking directly at him intently, wanting Henry to open the window. Left with two options, opening the window or leaving it shut, Henry decides to close the window and stay away from the entity. It doesn't take long before the entity breaks the window and stretches its arms into Henry's room, trying to catch him and seemingly overtake him. Henry, instead of fighting this entity, decides to leave the room and run into the hallway, which seems to solve the problem, with the entity not bothering him anymore. Not sure what he experienced was real or a figment of his imagination, he hears Ava knocking, trying to get his attention. Going to the window, Ava seems to be feeling better, who asks Henry if he's okay, as she heard sounds coming from his apartment. He explains that he saw things, thinking he's just dreaming, stuck in a surreal nightmare. Ava mentions that she heard the phone ringing, which proves Henry isn't dreaming and the phone did in fact really ring. Ava and Henry talk about the Lincoln junkies who used to occupy the higher level, performing their rituals, giving it the possibility that all the strange events could could in a way relate to them. Ava's curiosity takes over, informing Henry that she would check the higher level if she could somehow break through the gate. Henry conveniently has a hammer which he throws to Ava, who catches it and proceeds to break the lock of the gate and go up. Going to the site of the collapsed ceiling, Henry calls for Ava, who responds being directly 
above him. For some reason, risking her own safety, not only due to the possibility of paranormal entities being present, but the poor and delicate state of the construction above. Ava manages to loosen the cupboard and release it from the ceiling by repeatedly stumping on it, which slowly flips over, opening a large hole on the ceiling, connecting to the floor above. As Henry's apartment door has a broken door handle, he instead uses a rope and climbs to the higher level, looking for Ava. In there, he doesn't find any sign of her and instead finds a figure engulfed in shadow known as a peeker doing what he does best, peeking through the window. Henry, confused to who he is, asks him to identify himself when he says he's known as a peeker amongst many other names. The peeker then refers to Henry as the victim or the source of Lovi, a force or the result of the force, a cleft nudge, as if representing the absence or lack of something. The peeker then continues on that there's a group of them with another group called Seekers. Seekers seek while the peekers investigate the strange force called Lovey or the effect of the force having a source of being created and ultimately producing victims. The figure known as Peeker continues that the force is like a residue in thick air as if it's a black cloud obstructing the view, making a bright day dark and gloomy, becoming more troublesome at nights making one's mind wonder and wonder. As Henry leaves the bedroom and goes to the living room of the apartment, which is number 31, he makes the remark that it awfully resembles his apartment, except the walls are more wrinkled with paint faded, with the air thicker and more suffocating. A blank photo frame is standing on a shelf with a billboard outside having a writing questioning if something is missing. Henry looks around deeper, realizing that this in fact is his life or what it's going to be. The credits then start rolling with Henry stuck in this dark, sad, lonely apartment accompanied by the peeker whose only job is to look outside, wondering about life and what could be. Depicting how this in fact is the dark story of Henry being in a state of Valvela, or in other words, the state of awareness and awakeness, finally waking up from what his life could be, having a caring friend or partner like Ava, having a bright future ahead of himself, but instead, his life in reality is what it is now, a sad, lonely individual who couldn't overcome his demons, his anxiety and self-doubt. Instead of just defeating it, he decided to leave the tall demon behind, thinking it would all just disappear. Maybe Ava was a person of his past, who he couldn't gather the courage to speak to, forever stuck in his mind repeating the scenario of what if and what could, hence why he saw a spirit-like version of Ava called Ave, which translates to spirit or ghost. Ave is the memory of Ava who only repeats what Henry says, which means she's only now a ghost of what she was, a poor recreation of what she was, only present in Henry's mind. The peeker wears a mask hiding who he truly is as he says people don't like what's beneath. We investigate the strange force known as Lovey, a cleft nudge, an absence or lack of something. The lack of confidence, self-worth, happiness and friends. Lovey is the crippling anxiety which prevents people from socializing and having a healthy mind. Hence why the peekers look outside of the window, look in remorse where they could be. The people down there with others, in clubs, in restaurants, instead of being cooped up in the house. Peekers wonder and wonder and study people to how they socialize and interact, something that they lack. And seekers are in fact the opposite to peekers who seek the feeling of loneliness and sadness, a representation of catharsis, obtaining peace and tranquility in acceptance of defeat and sorrow. And finally, the blank frame on the shelf represented Henry's loneliness and lack of having any friends, and how he ended up in a dilapidated house, physically and mentally stuck, representing his psyche and mental health. 
The demon he avoided, being his anxiety, overtook him, even to the point of seeing himself through peepholes, becoming a wretched old person called Ina, which directly translates to wretched in Finnish, his unhappy, lonely, and creepy neighbor, who would harass young women to desperately attempt to fill the void of having no one. They would also be so unhappy that they would consistently complain about anything and everything, about anyone making any sound. The multiple peoples also suggest how scared Henry is of going out and interacting, but he desperately peeks, trying to find a way to communicate with others, but ultimately is too afraid to do so. The story doesn't end there, however, as Henry could in a way achieve redemption and happiness only through defeating his inner demons. When faced with the large demonic entity in his bedroom, he can face his fear and challenge it. By fighting it off and dropping his wardrobe on its stretching consuming hands, with tentacles protruding, the demon retreats and Henry comes out victorious. Repeating the same tasks and talking to Ava who goes to the floor above, who proceeds to use the the rope and climb up, facing a doomed future he could face, but a future he can change by facing his fear of socializing. With no sign of Ava around in the apartment, Henry finds her camera and picks it up, when he notices a floating entity outside of the window, having a frame of photo on its face. He proceeds to take a picture of it when it suddenly disappears, which in a way could represent his fear of being in center of attention, allowing himself to be photographed and approached. All of a sudden, Henry notices Ava standing outside of the apartment by the door, being apartment number 31, asking Henry to get something to eat together, seemingly having a happy ever after. This ending is called Unirophrenia, which is a sense of satisfaction from waking up from a pleasant dream, which could explain what Henry experienced was nothing but a dream. Having a pleasant ending, going out with his crush Ava, who helped him get over many obstacles and defeating many demons. In some sense, being a hero, even Ava insisting that it was all Henry who could manage finding a way out of his apartment. That's why at the very end, the screen slowly fades into light, depicting how Henry is waking up, having a satisfied feeling from a seeming nightmare, which ended up in a victory and overcoming challenges such as social anxiety and shock which he could probably not overcome in real life. His personal challenges were even depicted in physical demonic entities, who he defeated single-handedly, ending up with someone he had a crush on. Its final interpretation is up to the player who could interpret this as an actual dream or a figurative dream, which is representing overcoming his fear and anxiety, ending up with his crush. For me personally, however, I like a happier ending, making me want to think that Henry ended up with the heroic of uh, having a happy future future together. Whatever the ending, the game beautifully portrayed how social anxiety and being cooped up in a house could feel like. Wanting to go out, peeking through windows and halls, but still having lovey, a dark force stopping one from doing so. As a result, staying out of sight, avoiding any interaction or confrontation, regressing to a state where one can be seen as a creep, getting called a creep by many, and possibly in the worst case scenario, becoming someone like Ina or in other words, wretched, an unhappy, and grumpy person. Only way to overcome it is to face the inner demons clouding one's happiness and taking the chances presented to them, interacting with someone like Ava. Therefore, the story could be explained in two words, blank frame, the absence of friends, social life, being reduced to someone whose mind only wonders about the possibilities of what could be. What a story, sounded more like a hard wake up call than anything else. If you folks enjoyed this video, you can stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host R, as always, until the next time, have a fantastic day, take care.